uh, the Salem Radio Network and he's on with us right now and got to tell you his analysis is is just not from some perspective like a republican analysis or a democratic analysis or a saudi arabian analysis or a i mean it's just really from the research i've seen what's going on a very straight up um analysis of what's going on not from any perspective at all just of what's happening and he was telling me during the break he thinks bottom line it is the saudi arabians going on their own because they're mad with Obama doing a deal with Iran. Now uh, the uh, Iraqi prime minister, I keep calling him president, is just rejecting everyone, saying he's been triple-crossed. Uh, this seems to be the new system. It's always gone to a certain extent, but you lose any moral authority when you're flip-flopping constantly, when you turn on your allies like Egypt and turn the place over to people 50 times worse than the previous regime, who like start crucifying Christians and blowing up churches. Uh, our media, I mean, I saw Fareed Zarkaria yesterday morning on CNN when I was on the elliptical. He was on there for 30 minutes with a just evil look on his face going, Maliki deserves this. Uh, Iraq's bad. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia is doing a great job. And it'd be one thing if you cold-bloodedly endorsed civil war to divide and conquer, which I think is immoral and bad. But the, just, just the... It's like Hillary, we came, we saw he died. It's all these wimps, like bragging about what big killers they are and, and how they flip-flop and how they screw everybody. We lose all of our credibility, all of our soft power. And I, I just think at the end of the day, Obama's the worst president this country's ever had. And, and I think they're so delusional, Aaron, that they think there's a strategy in all this. And, and this is the same stuff I've studied history that I've seen other elites be, basically go insane. And, and, and that's my gestalt of what I see happening. Give me your take on that, and then you were giving me a lot of key stuff during the break. Please share the big picture with folks, where it's going, what you see unfolding. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're so delusional that, as I was saying before, that, that Jordan was funding ISIS. Now, ISIS, which is al-Qaeda, is turning against Jordan. And it's the same thing with the Saudis. They're playing a very dangerous game here. Because the very groups that they are now funding, I don't know that these Al Qaeda groups understand fully where they get where the weapons and money uh, in, in, for, for Iraq comes from. That it's coming from the Saudis. They hate Saudi Arabia. They see Saudi the Saudis as uh, usurpers on Islamic land. Uh, also, before the break, you mentioned Brzezinski. So uh, I, I want to remind everybody that tied into all of this, the the military doctrine that was used originally to bomb Libya. It's also the military doctrine that Obama has cited if he would ever go to war in Syria is something, uh, I'm sure you've talked about it, it's called responsibility to protect, uh, which I've done an enormous amount of, of research on. Samantha Powered on the, uh, on the board of the group that founded responsibility to protect. Bottom line of it is that uh, it, according to responsibility to protect, any uh, th there's, there is no nation state with a border. Borders don't exist. If, if any country is accused of war crimes or crimes against humanity, the international community can come down, swoop in, and go to war. Uh, and even if later it's proven that there were no war crimes. So I'm mentioning this because uh, tied into all of this actually is that whole uh, access. Brzezinski, uh, international re uh, uh, responsibility to protect, it was actually founded by an organization, or uh, they were one of the founding members. It's called the International Crisis Group, which is where George Soros sits. And another member, this is why I'm mentioning this, of the International Crisis Group that, again, founded Responsibility to Protect. Their president uh, is one of the architects of it. Uh, it happens to be that uh, one of the main members is also a guy named Thomas Pickering, who was the uh, lead investigator for the Benghazi attacks. So if you look at the weapons to the jihadist insurgents, it, it could be that Pickering, with the State Department review, came in to kind of whitewash all of that. that that's just a side note. No, and then you got George Soros floating around in the background, and, and they use destabilization as a, as a political tool, but... But then they never even stabilize it. it. It looks, I mean, I don't see their strategies even from their sick perspective working. That's my point. It, unless the ultimate strategy is, is chaos, is for, this, is for there to be no strategy, or, or at least for this strategy to be Operation Chaos. Remember, actually, it's called the International Crisis Group. They need a crisis in order to, to push whatever it is ultimately. And, and I'll tell you, I'm here in Israel, and originally, like I said, Israel... I uh, had no problem with the rebels that were fighting in Syria or in Libya. Uh, but now Israel understands 
oops, uh, these rebels now have taken over large swaths of territory in Israel's borders and probably in the future in Jordan, probably in the future in Lebanon. Right now they're fighting very close to the Syria border. I could, I could literally drive there in three hours from where I am right now. So this is incredibly dangerous for Israel, for Jordan, which really is a moderate Arab country. Uh, the Jordanian king, uh, extremely Western-oriented, he might be overthrown. And so the larger picture actually is the C word, caliphate. It's, yeah, I don't know if we're going there. Uh, I don't know if, I, I certainly, uh, like I said before, uh, Al-Qaeda, is, these Islamic jihadist organizations, they have no long-term plan. They have no long-term govern, governing strategy. So I don't know if it will really be achieved, but obviously their goal is sure. no borders. It Let me ask you this. What does border. Obama do when the European, Israeli, and U.S. airliners start getting blown up? I mean, I'm not going to drive up to checkpoints, you know, five miles from the from the airport where they cl they're looking for Stinger missiles in my car when our own government gave it to them. I mean, I'm really getting sick of this. And I want Obama and the State Department and all of them to know. We're going to make sure somebody gets prosecuted for this because I don't see them getting away with it when when Al Qaeda starts shooting stuff down. And, and, and undoubtedly, you got thousands of missing missiles. They're going to start shooting stuff down, in my view, or is that wrong from your view? Yeah, I mean, if they're anti Western. They want to destroy the United States, number one. <laughs> number two, they have anti aircraft missiles. So if they don't use them, it would make absolutely no strategic sense on their part. Uh, but, you know, this is this, the arming of the rebels, the uh, giving to them in Syria of anti-aircraft missiles. This is Iran-Contra times infinity. At least with Iran-Contra, they were trading arms to at least try to get some hostages out. In this case, it's for nothing. And in this case, we're talking about extremely extremely serious arms. A a Ambassador Stevens... Yeah, Iran-Contra was anti-tank missiles, not anti-aircraft. Yeah, uh, Ambassador Stevens, people always call him that, Ambassador Stevens, as if he had a political role. But don't forget, he arrived on a, on a, uh, a, a boat uh, in, in the secret of the night to serve as a conduit with the rebels, a.k.a. the jihadists, a.k.a. Uh, individuals connected to al-Qaeda, he wasn't just an ambassador. He was also kind of an arms dealer. He was he was working with this whole nexus. And so uh, it, our fate might really be that of Ambassador Chris Stevens. This is what happens when you play with fire. You're not only going to get burned, uh, but al-Qaeda could, could, as you just said, and I think it's really only a matter of time, uh, shoot down passenger aircraft, whether here, well, there are plenty of uh, you know, U.S. Uh, passenger aircraft that, that leave in the Middle East and North Africa, or ultimately in the in the United States, they, they certainly they, another problem here. Don't forget, is a lot of foreigners um, from United U.S., U.K., Australia. They've all joined the rebels. We're talking about hundreds of, uh, of them just from Australia and Europe alone. Who have passports? Dozens. Who have yeah, passports? It, it, it's exactly. A, it, it's a disaster. Okay. We'll continue to follow it. Uh, Aaron, thank you so much for all the time today, and we'll talk to you on the nightly news tomorrow. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. All right. That's Aaron Klein. I, got, I find no fault with what he says. It's dead on. Straight talk. Shot us straight from Tel Aviv. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to this amazing piece that Darren McBreen put out. Briefly, we have a detox special going with the fluoride shield with all the key components to detox the heavy metals, you name it, with the new Survival Shield X2. Both of them discounted massively. It's over a 30 plus percent discount and I am putting in my water right now fluoride shield with the new X2 and then I'm going to take, we got a few thousand bottles of this in, it will sell out the lung cleanse. And your purchase helps fund this operation so we appreciate all of your support. Be sure and go to InfoWarsLife.com to find the amazing proprietary products and be sure to subscribe to the nightly news so you can see the nightly news and all the films and more at PrisonPlanet.tv. Here is Darren McBreen's simply amazing uh, piece that he put together where he nexuses the film network with the current things that are happening. Here it is. <laughs> Prepare yourself for a perfectly outrageous motion picture. Howard Beale went up there last night and said what every American feels, that he's tired of all the bull... Sakes, Diana, we're talking about putting a manifestly irresponsible man on national television. Shut
1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. There is no America. There is no democracy. There is only IBM and ITT and AT&T and DuPont, Dow, Union Carbide and Exxon. Those are the nations of the world today. And you have meddled with the primal forces of nature. And you will atone. Am I getting through to you, Mr. Beale? Why me? It was your own television, dummy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Network News Hour with Howard Beale. can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! <laughs> thing sucks! Yeah. What the hell's going on? I don't know. He just said he was going to blow his brains out. That's tomorrow and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching.